Well, the moral of today's video and story is eight or nine out of 10 times when I do these junkyard engines, you just rip it apart, you look at it, things are pretty good. You change a few things and you send it on down the road and you have some good fun with it. Well, today we got lucky, not in a good way. And at least if you stick around toward the end of the video, you'll realize some of the stuff that I started realizing as I got into this motor on why I'm gonna pass on this 5.3. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to the Burndown YouTube channel. So we are here today with a Junkyard LS motor. So I got this for a buddy of mine. Uh, his name is Larry. He's pretty cool. Hopefully maybe we'll make a video on him, but he actually used to design Hot Wheels. So that's really cool. And I'm friends with the guy and he's a gearhead through and through, but he's old school. He knows old school stuff. He has an LS and a, uh, I think it's a wagon that he owns. And he likes it and he knows the LS is tried and true and it runs and drives and is like kind of headache free compared to the older uh, engines and he loves the fuel efficiency and EFI and all that but I think he bought the car like that or he had somebody swap it I don't know what the story is on that one but he has a new project it's really cool it's a Jaguar like a really old school one so maybe we can get over and show you when he gets further along with this thing but he asked me to help him out with the LS uh, I found him one and then uh, I'm gonna help him wire the car but he wanted me to go through this because like a lot of you guys, you either clicked on this video because you're a long uh, time subscriber, so thank you, or you're new to the LS game. And even though I've seen a ton of these, I know there's a lot of guys out there that are like, LS motors are so boring, but I know there's a big handful of guys that are still afraid of them because they think it's newer technology and it's fuel injected and they're like, just give me one hot lead and a carburetor and a screwdriver and I'm good. Well, this is for you guys. If you're not really familiar with it, we can kind of tear it down and what I'm gonna do in the video is show you kind of what I look for to go yay or nay on the motor, it's pretty good. So, I'm gonna turn around and show you the motor. This is what we got here. Uh, a friend of mine had this, I think he said he had it for like his S10 project, and uh, he painted the lovely orange. I'm not a big fan of the Chevy orange color, but he said it ran, everything was good. I do trust the guy, but Larry doesn't know him, right? So. Larry wanted me to go through it. If it were just me, I'd probably just throw the, the darn thing in the car, but you know, it's already out. There's a few things you can look for and a few changes to kind of make sure this thing's gonna be bulletproof and it's gonna work and you don't waste your time and have to pull it back out and kick yourself. It looks like he even painted some silver on there. Got it in the porch, she's looking good. So now that we have our mystery motor, we don't know anything about it. Uh, let me take some of the parts off. We'll just time lapse it real quick. And then when I get into things that we should inspect, you know, we'll kind of go over that and what I look for. And again, I'm not some certified mechanic. Um, I have, you know, the turbo car behind me. I put this motor that's in here together. This is a little higher in than what I usually do, but I had a 5.3 running in this thing that I turboed. And uh, I had some help with the tuning, but I was cutting my teeth, kind of learning how to tune the thing. So I figure, you know, if I could kind of go through that one and inspect it, and it lasted me two, three years, and then this one went all through Rocky Mountain Race Week and uh, it needs to be freshened up because somebody ran out of oil. But we won't talk about that. What we will say is these motors are pretty tried and true. And if I can kind of do it and stumble through it, you guys will be fine. I'll just show you what I look for and it'll give you kind of a better feeling of what am I really looking at. All right, so first and foremost, if you're a small block Chevy guy, Ford or whatever it is that you're playing with, these are all metrics, so you're gonna need a full tool set if you're stuffing this in a classic car. Um, like you see behind me, the, the Malibu, if you can even see it still. So I've, all the motor stuff and everything is metric, and then the car itself is standard. So that's kind of one of those things too, but majority of the items you'll need, eight millimeter, 10 millimeter, 13 millimeter, and a 15. And I think that gets majority of this thing apart. Um, you may have some rogue, rogue bolts in there, but for the most part, I think that's pretty much what you'll need to get this thing zipped apart. I use my little 12 volt deal, and then this is to knock the heads off the thing. So you should just be able to zip everything apart for the most part, but real quick, we'll rip the intake off, and then we'll take the valve covers, and that's where we can kind of start inspecting things. So let's get this off, get the valve covers off, and then we'll get to looking at rocker arms. I set this on here because it was off. 
I had to lift it with the lift plate. These are eight millimeter. These shouldn't be super tight. When you're assembling it, they have a big silicone gasket and you don't want to get all like He-Man Hulk on the thing because you will break them off. So, you take assemblies off. Valve cover, eight millimeters as well. Comes off. Bada boom, bada bing. It's like an overgrown Lego set for adults and children. All right. Here we go. So we pulled this apart. This is where you can start kind of inspecting things. This is all looking pretty good. In my opinion, you can grab these things, you know, kind of give them a wiggle, see if there's excessive play. That's where I like to kind of start. You know, if you're in the junkyard, that's really easy to get. You can take this off. You don't need to take that off at the junkyard to kind of start your inspection. So these are all tight. That's good. So what I'm going to do next is we're going to take all of these off. These are eight. Um, you probably want to crack those loose with your ratchet and then we'll zip them off with this guy. So let me get this whole tray off and then I'll show you they come all out in a tray and we can set it off to the side. But so far so good. Uh, I don't see anything too crazy. Some of these are more crusty. Um, still not the end of the world, but this one looks to be uh, fairly clean. So these are gonna be fairly tight from getting heat baked or whatever, you know, heat cycled on there. But the cool thing about an LS that I've found makes it really simple. So once you kind of start working on them and you assemble and disassemble them enough, the torque spec generally coincides with the size of the bolt you're working on. Um, so a lot of the stuff, you know, the eight millimeters and 10 millimeters are gonna be like 22 foot pounds. And don't quote me because I'm not looking at the book or whatever, but on most things, I wanna say these are like 22. Um, and then again, ugh, all the stuff like the eights and tens are usually around that. So that's kind of neat, just offhand. I don't know what the other ones are. Like I said, I, I usually look up the torque spec, but I've had enough rocker arms off to know that it's 22 for these boys. Actually the top head bolts too that are 10s, I believe it's the same recommendation. If I'm wrong, feel free to roast me in the comment section. Your opportunity. So I'm just breaking them loose <laughs> with my little ratchet here. Then we'll put the sauce to them. Take them off. All right. Zippity doo dah. You can take it all the way out. You don't have to worry about it going anywhere. There you go. All these guys hang out. And then what you can do. Flip your valve cover over and you take this off and set it in there. So that's what we're going to do here, A and B. So you just grab the flat portion, pull them out. There you go, Bob's your uncle. We'll do the other side too. Guess I should loosen them first. Like NASCAR. Practice to be a tire guy. Alright. Bada boom, bada bing. So now that those are off, uh, this is, you wiggle them, they look good. You want to look at the tips of these. And I'll show you what we're looking for. So, this guy, see how it's nice and shiny. I pull this guy out he's not so shiny it looks like a little starvation wipe this side down so this is a the one that's a little dull so let's see not so bad on the bottom side so you want to inspect these so we've got one is that that dude there this one's good a little dull so that's kind of a sign of like maybe you had a little something going on and it'll, you'll be able to see it. 
So this is really shiny and then this is a little dull and then I just put my dirty hand on this. This one's a little dull. Shiny, shiny, shiny. Yeah, so, so. And then these are all shiny. So looks like maybe we had some dry starts. Um, I think that's typical of that type deal. And that'll give you the clatter when you start it. And then it'll it'll dull these ends of these push rods. So we're gonna pull all of these out. And then I've done so many of these, I think I have push rods laying around that are nice and shiny. So when we go to reassemble it, um, we will do that. And then the other thing, when you pull these out, you pull them all out, you wanna set them down and roll them. Make sure they're nice and straight. So I will pull all these out. I'll roll them, make sure they're good. We will set those in here. And this is what I was talking about, you know, containing all your junk. So we'll do the same thing. I'll put all the push rods in here. We take this little guy out and it'll be a nice little tray. So let me get all those out and then uh, we'll keep rolling. Yeah, when you really bunch them up, you can see the dull guys to the shiny. So those are pretty, pretty nicked. You know, they're pretty rough. So that indicates, like I said, I think maybe some dry starts, um, letting the oil go too long. But it's intermittent too, so it could be seals possibly. All right. So I guess you're wondering, the question would be, if I was you watch this video, go, well, you found that, is that bad? What, what, you know, is that motor still good? Would you continue with it? Um, I've seen them, like this still has the shape, it's just a little rough. I've seen where it like flattens them out and you really have some problems. So I would say this thing is still fine. Like I said, we had some sort of oil starvation at a certain point. What I would suspect is maybe like a bad O-ring on the oil pump and then you'd get on, under a long crank scenario or a scenario where the car actually starts and um, the oil pressure builds up after it's running. So that's pretty common when the, when the O-ring seal on the oil pump starts to fail or there's a couple other seals that we'll go over. But um, yeah, so that would probably be indicative of that. That's what I'm guessing. Again, uh, you can leave comments as you see fit and then we'll roll all these on a flat surface to make sure they're flat. Um, but we're not assembly today, this is all disassembly. So that was the first kind of like, eh, you know, you can look at the tops of the valves. Again, all this stuff looks pretty good to me. So we'll take the valley cover off uh, and then we'll remove heads and we get this pump and stuff out of the way. I got the valley cover off, let me show you this. So we got the valley cover off, you just take these bolts off and then down here, this is a Gen 3 motor uh, and you can tell the difference because this has the crank sensor back here. This oil pressure crank sensor on a Gen 4, this doesn't have this provision and it'll have a sensor up here. So that's an easy, you know, visual for a Gen 3 to 4. So this being a Gen 3, it has a valley cover. It looks like this. Uh, this guy was roached out and stuck on there. So I pried it off and wasted this. So this will need either a new seal or if I have a hole, like another cover, but we'll see, we'll probably just replace these seals. And this ended up being seven eighths. I don't know what size it is in metric. I didn't have it in metric, but you have to take these out or you'll never get this cover off. So that's a good FYI. That's why I kind of stopped here because I'm like, you'd see it in there, but you wouldn't know if you'd never done one of these, that you have to have that off because it'll hold that in there. Um, if you were in the yard and you were doing stuff, there's a good chance you can kind of inspect the few lobes on the cam and uh, I thought it was grooved, but it may just be gunk on there. And I was touching and feeling it, but we're gonna go ahead and pull this all the way down. But this is a good point. Like if this is really grooved and you're like, you know, I'm iffy on that, I don't wanna deal with it. But the good thing is, even if this was grooved and, and crap, uh, you're gonna replace the lifters in the cam anyway, because we're doing performance. Um, in this application, however, I need a good cam. So if this one's bad, I'm gonna get another stock cam because that's what he wants. But I know nine out of 10 guys watching this, you wanna do the cam swap, it's your best bang for buck horsepower wise. So we got that that far down. Uh, we'll pull this out, we can probably do that. Like a boss, look at that. One-handed, mamma jamma. It should have a little O-ring seal on it. Oh, I can get it, pull it out without putting the camera down. Uh, the answer is maybe. I thought I was gonna be cool and just pop it out of there. Wow, look at that. All right, so, <laughs> looks like I'm gonna need two hands for that. And we'll get that pulled out and then I'll put my puller on here. And this is a 24, I believe this looks like it's already been off. So hopefully it doesn't fight me too bad. 
but that's what the earthquake is for so we'll make quick work of that we'll put my puller on here and uh, i'll show you guys that too because this gets confusing when you pull it a lot of guys use the puller and they think it needs a special puller um but you don't so we'll show you how to put the puller on here and get this guy off and then uh, we'll continue on so let me cut it here and get this guy out of here that made me look silly and then we'll keep rolling so at this point in the video if you are doing an actual junkyard motor you're in the junkyard this thing's in the car which is a much more of a pain in the ass uh, i would straight pull the heads i'd pull the valley i'd pull the heads <clears throat> pull the trays and then go to the next step but since we are not in the junkyard we are at home um, i want to show you this on the back of here there's these little indents so you can actually use a little short free jaw puller and then it fits through there and then on to there you want to use a, the short guy because the long ones don't work properly so you use a little short throw that seems to work for me and then to push against it i just get a bolt this is just a bolt i had and then you can see how many times i've used it and a big fatty washer that just slides in here it doesn't thread into anything it just sits so you can you can pull it out obviously this is the wrong washer because it would get caught on that so we can just throw the bolt in there i have a washer somewhere that's small enough to give it a little more surface area so let me go dig in the drawer but uh yeah just a washer put this in there and then you can use your puller against the bolt so you don't muck up anything with the crank and all that stuff so let me get this thing set up and then we'll pull this off and we'll continue on show you a quick reference i got my better washer in there i thought that other one i grabbed was it so still a thick washer but it just gives it a little more surface area and then uh got my bolt in there and then i've just got this hand tight on here so that is it we'll start turning it and then again grip it from back here with the short guys and then you should be rock and roll so watch it's gonna probably make me struggle now but let's see if we can crank this thing off here all right So it looks like it's sliding out pretty good. <laughs> we'll fast forward. I don't know if this is probably recommended, probably not. Bob is your uncle. That is that. That's that. All right. Bada boom, bada bang. So this wasn't too bad. Sometimes. Uh, the 24 can just get welded. I mean, sometimes it's really a bear. And then, uh, you know, this helps and then putting the jaws on correctly. I've been out here before when I first started doing this. And I don't know why I was so tricked. I was trying to pull it from here. There's those little tabs and I was just, I don't know. But I've done enough of them over the years. I figured I'd share that with you guys. This balancer looks to be in good shape too. So this will go right back on, right back on as well. So, all right, we'll zip these off and then uh, we'll keep on scooting. Okay, so the oil was out for the most part. Uh, I still turned my catch pan down and pulled the filter and it, it puked. So at least we're doing pretty good with that. There's a 10 millimeter bolt on the one side on the oil pump. We got that out and then there's one over here. So we'll pull this down, see if we can do it. Give it the old one hand -aroo. Oh, I'm sorry, this one has two. So it's underneath here. I'm being lazy, I don't wanna flip the whole motor over, so let me pull that off, and then this should come out. Okay, so both of those are off, and then this, technically, just wiggle out of there. Come on, man, come on, man. It helps when you leave the bolts and the oil pump in. Yes. Don't try to catch it with your GoPro. Uh, so, let's do that in there. Oh, we're batting a thousand. So yeah, 
that seals in it. This thing popped out of that fairly easy though. So it's a green one, which tells me it's aftermarket. And then that would correspond with the oiling issue that I showed you guys with the push rods. So I would bet that that's the, because they had the wrong one. I guess Felpro though may make a green aftermarket one, but typically it's a big fatty red one. You want the fattest one you can get on the Gen 3 with a dipstick like this, to where it's really hard to press in there. And um, if you don't, it won't create a good seal. And when you shut the car off, it'll actually bleed back down. So I'm betting that was the issue with this motor. And then this is made in Canada. This is an aftermarket pump. It looked like they were probably trying to solve the issue. So melling is what you want. You don't want this junk. So this will all go in the trash. Um, and then we'll save the pickup. But yeah, so I would think that was the issue with this. It's probably like a low oil pressure deal. So we'll yank. Um, we'll get this off, but I got to get, we'll get the heads and lifters out. And then this will slide out and that's going to get tell us the whole story. And then we'll also be able to look in the barrels. So mainly I want to see the cam bearings. Um, and then we can rotate the crank by hand and just double check, but we should be good. The crank is the first thing to get oil. Your lifters and the top of the back of the motor is the last thing. So, like, so we didn't look too bad. So I think we're still in the clear with this. And then somebody was awesome. And they just put some silicone on here. So uh, we'll have to get that gasket as well. So let me keep rolling. We'll keep pulling it down and now uh, we're looking good. All right, on to the fun stuff. If you're in the junkyard, you're going to need a three quarter inch socket. If you have one of those like fancy 18 volt deals, they may do it. But the head bolts, especially if it's never been off, they're gonna be pretty damn tight. So I like to do them with this guy. They're 15s and then 10s. So we'll start with the 10s, which are on top. Those shouldn't be too bad. And then we'll get on with the, with the old 15s. NASCAR. Let me change our chingadera to the old 15 aru. Let me double check so I don't like complete it. There you go, 15. I'll pull all these out. Yeah, don't drop them in the motor. That would not be that great. Technically, it doesn't matter. But all right, zip these dudes off. Go. You notice I did them all but the center one make my life easy and then this motor is a long bolt motor and actually yeah they're all factory location I don't know if this one's been apart yet I think I think not So I'll show you real quick too, because if you're long bolt, short bolt, like if you bought head bolts or studs, there's a difference. So if you have the question, an earlier motor is going to be a long bolt, and then it will only have four of these short bolts, one on either end. If I can't, I can't pull that one out to show you, but it's being a pain. But that's the difference between like a long bolt and a short bolt. And then a short, bam, there you go. So on a short bolt block, all of the bolts are this size so uh depends on what you have obviously the shorter bolt in my opinion is gonna be a little stronger because of you know the length on the stretch on these but again i ran a long bolt motor i made like i don't know six and some change almost seven and uh with the turbo reused bolts like five times i mean they're fine so i wouldn't worry about if it's a long or short bolt main thing is to get it running and have some fun so I'm going to pull this last one out and do it a little more cautiously, and then we should be able to pop the head. The head should be stuck on here, but better safe than, you know, our toes are going to be sorry. All right. We got the head off on this side. I swore we spun this thing over, but see that? 
This thing got some action. Looks like some water. There's some like rust in there. Um, I don't know. At this point, I'm inclined to call it a no-go. What we want is we want them to be more shiny like this, and then they can be kind of like discolored or whatever. Kind of a little. That's not so bad, depending if you can feel it or not. But something like this, this is really rough to the touch. This would need to be like honed out and would need some action. So I'm gonna call this one a no-go. And uh, I'm not gonna waste the rest of my time disassembling it. So one of those videos where it's kind of good, kind of not. And again, I swear we spun this. Let me put a bolt in here just to see if it'll spin. But um, yeah, let's let's see what we how we go with that. See this thing will even turn over. I thought we cranked it or he spun it when we got it, but I don't remember because it's been a little while. But with the cylinder looking like that, oh, it still does move. Yeah, especially at the bottom. So let me show you what a good cylinder looks like. Okay, so see that? See how it's shiny? Might be a little glazed for mileage, but you can just throw like a dingle ball hone in there and call it a day. But this one, she's rough. You know, this whole edge up here is just, and you could probably hone this, you know? And for me, I'm not terribly afraid if you got a real good deal on this thing, but if you were buying this and you had your pick, I wouldn't I wouldn't purchase this so um, I'm not gonna let dude purchase this motor we're gonna find him another short block it's in good shape and we'll go from there so yeah what you want is you want all those cylinders to be shiny so moral of the story we're gonna put this right in the front of the video spin it over and again I showed you it did this one did spin over but then it's funny because with the valves and stuff I'd imagine it would have had a little more issue with the crud in there but again, the heads and everything look good. So maybe that got some water in it from sitting out. Maybe the head gasket leaked. Cause like I said, it, I don't know. It looks like a factory gasket. Let's see. Yeah, it doesn't have any sealant or nothing. I think it's a factory gasket. I think it just from sitting out. If you see something like that, um, I'm not even gonna pull this other head off cause I'm not gonna deal with it. You would definitely have to have that cleaned up at a machine shop. Unless you were a really gangster and you're like, I don't even care and it's a super duper budget. I would just close my eyes and dingle ball that thing and then put it together. But you would mo more than likely be down on compression in that cylinder, which doesn't make for good race car. But like I said, if it's extreme budget and somebody has handed you this thing, eh. So until next time, that is it. Moral of the story, spin it over. If you're in the junkyard, pull the heads first because you can just zip them back down if it looks good. But that's personally what I would do. I wouldn't go as far as disassembling this. Obviously, I'm going to go through it, and I wanted to go through it ex extensively for my buddy to make sure he got a good motor. But I'm calling this one bad, and then that is it. So on to the next video. You guys know what to do. I hope it was informative. I'm kind of glad we found a bad one, because if it was good, I'd be like, oh, it's good, it's great. And then one of you guys would find a bad one and go, oh, man. So, yeah, you know, you got to do your due diligence. Happy hot rodding. Until next time, you guys know what to do. Like, subscribe, share. I'm out.